Today we're going to go into some detail about how the responsive features of Muse treat images specifically. And uh, the reason for that is there are two completely different ways to place an image in Adobe Muse, and those two different ways get handled in two different ways by the responsive features of Muse. And uh, the first thing I want to talk about is how these images got here. And this was just a place, a drag and drop. Nothing weird, nothing special. I'm going to go to the Finder, grab an image, drop it in. Uh, I'm going to get my cursor loaded with the image and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to make sure I know uh, I know ahead of time that this image is wide enough to go all the way from the right edge uh, to this image here because they're the same aspect ratio and I sized this one ahead of time. Uh, what you could do is if your images are not, uh, let's say you don't know if they're going to fit but they're the same shape, um, you can size them so that they match one another like so and then once you've got them lined up you can shift click the other one, get them both selected. Uh, I'm going to do Command G for group, it's Control G on the PC. And now that they're a group, um, I can size them, they stick together, and now that I've got this uh, established in terms of the full width, uh, I can do Shift Command G to ungroup them, and now I'm good to go. So that's a quick little trick uh, for getting those things lined up. So now that I've got these images next to each other and lined up, let's see how they're going to be handled responsively. So I'm going to select them both again. I'm going to go up to Resize, and Resize is set to Responsive Width and Height. And you'll notice that Responsive Width isn't even an option. It has to be Responsive Width and Height if it's an image that you dragged and dropped in or placed. The reason for that is it doesn't want to distort the image as the browser gets more narrow. As the photos get more narrow to match, the height also has to get reduced so that they're the same shape. Otherwise, they'd get squished and they'd look pretty silly. The other option is none, of course, but since we're talking responsive, we want to look at how responsive width and height gets handled. So let's check this out in the browser. And as we scale the browser down, the images become less tall, which means the entire page becomes less tall. That's the important, that's really the more important takeaway here. The entire page is reducing in height. The text is actually coming up with the images. We're not getting a large gap as the images shrink. Because really, if the text stayed down here and the images got smaller and shrunk up to here, we would then have a gap from here to here. So it's smarter than that. It actually moves all the elements below the images up. Uh, to follow the images. But if you have an image next to text, it's going to be a whole different story. If I delete this paragraph, for example, and I delete this image, for example, bring this paragraph up. Let's preview this in the browser. See, now the height of the image is getting compromised, and the, and the text is actually getting longer uh, because the text box is responsive. So this can start to get a little weird and a little silly. So let's look at our other option for placing an image, and that is by using a fill in a shape. So instead of grabbing my image this time, I'm going to go to the shape tool, the rectangle tool, and I'm going to click and drag an empty rectangle. I'm going to do the same thing, make sure that it's the proper uh, height and the proper width, make sure everything's snapping together nicely here. And now that I've done that, I can go to Fill in the top left corner, and I can choose Add Image, and I can place that image that way. Another cool thing that I did not know, and I'm not even sure if this is a new feature, is if the image is already on the page, let's say you're watching this tutorial and you're saying, oh, I already placed my images, I didn't do it the Fill way, I did it the drag and drop way. You can cut the image, you can either go to Edit and choose Cut, uh, or you could do Command or Control X. Uh, to cut it. And then you can go to your shape, your rectangle that you just made. You could do a right click and you can choose to paste as background image. It's the coolest thing. When you do that though, the settings are going to be a little wonky. So you're going to have to go up to fill. This is placed at original size and we're going to choose scale to fill. There we go. And then we're going to center it up. Uh, here's what's weird though. You may notice that the image quality is a little bit reduced. Let's preview this in the browser. It just fixed itself. I don't know why that happens. It's uh, when you cut and paste it from, let's say it's teeny tiny on the page and you paste it into a big box. Um, it looks like a teeny tiny image scaled up to fill the big box. It hasn't reloaded the native resolution of that image yet. Uh, but when you preview in the browser or if you refresh the asset on the assets panel, uh, it does. It actually uh, updates it and becomes the native resolution, so it's no longer pixelated. Since YouTube's pixelated in the first place, you guys may have not even noticed that happening, but on my screen it went from looking terrible to looking really good when I previewed it in the browser and just went back. So, weird little quirk there. So now the idea is, since these are boxes filled with an image, they're not just images dropped on the canvas, we get a different set of options up here. If we go to resize, we now have responsive width. 
We also have stretch to browser width if you want to do a 100% page width image. And you might be thinking, well, what's the difference between responsive width if the image is already going all the way across and stretch to browser width if the image is already going all the way across? The difference has to do with this little icon up here that tells the page width to stop at your widest breakpoint if the browser keeps getting wider and wider and wider. Because you might not want this text to get stretched and stretched until it becomes one line of text on a gigantic screen, right? So this button will allow it to keep stretching and stretching and stretching. This direction for this button will make it stop at your widest breakpoint, which would make a responsive image stop getting wider there. If you go like this, the image keeps getting wider and wider and wider. But then the text does too. So what do you do? You want your image to keep getting wider. You want your text to stay the same, like the old days in Adobe Muse. And the answer is you cap it here. You keep the arrow pointing left so it doesn't get wider and wider and wider and wider. But you tell the image to stretch to the browser width. That doesn't respect the responsive cap here. The image will keep going, even though responsively you've told everything else to stop. So that's the difference between doing responsive with and having one image go all the way across, or stretch to browser with and having one image go all the way across. Stretch to browser with will ignore these little arrows here and keep stretching and stretching and stretching. But we have two images here, so stretch to browser with doesn't work. Otherwise, they'd be on top of one another or one above the other, and I'm trying to get them side by side. So responsive width is the only choice that we can actually work with here. And with responsive width set, notice it's not responsive width and height like it was on the other screen. With responsive width set, when I preview this in the browser, the boxes are going to change width, and the images are going to reposition themselves to fill properly in that box. So we no longer have to worry about the text moving up and down or the layout shifting. Uh, the only thing we have to worry about is the images being cut off as we do this. So you want to choose images wisely um, that don't become a problem when the sides get cut off. If you have two people sitting talking to one another across the table and you go like this and both of their heads get cut off, well, you just ruined your image and you did so by design. So be careful and make those considerations in your design so that you don't have to worry about things getting cut off, like images like this. They're uh, sort of the width doesn't matter. Also, if we click on these images and go to fill, um, the position becomes important. So let's say I anchor these to the left, and let's do that again. Oops, wrong keyboard shortcut. Preview in browser. And now, as we do that, you'll notice the images don't seem to be repositioning within their boxes. And that's because these boxes are moving based on their left edge, or in this case, not moving based on their left edge. And the image is anchored to that same left edge. So it looks like the images and boxes are sticking together. They're not slipping uh, separately from one another, uh, which personally, I don't like. That's not my preference. I'd rather anchor it to the middle. Um, one, because composing is a little bit easier. You know that both sides are going to get trimmed equally as it scales. Uh, and two, because you get that sort of uh, parallax of the photos being inside of a window. It kind of looks like you're looking through a three-dimensional window at the image and that that window is being reduced in size. So that's the difference. That's a pretty big difference between uh, using an image fill and how those work responsibly versus just dropping in an image and how those work responsibly. So again, I'm going to do what we did before. I'm going to drag this paragraph up. I might even make this box taller to match the paragraph. And uh, I could go taller and taller and taller. It's automatically going to scale the image to fill because I told it to and because it's a box and not an image. And now as I drag, see how the image doesn't shrink up and become an awkward size? Uh, the text is moving, but the image is supporting that text. Uh, so to speak. So uh, I feel this is a lot of the time a better way to do responsive images using fills instead of using images. And uh, like we did before, remember how we copied and pasted an image and brought it in as an image fill? If you change your mind and you want to go the other way, you can right click on the image. You could say that you want to copy or cut the background image, and then I can delete this. And then you just hit paste. So we cut the image, copied the image out, and then pasted it, and it's no longer in a box. It's now a regular image, and now resize gives us the opposite option. So it's really easy to switch back and forth. You don't have to remember where the image was. You don't have to go find it, drop it in again. You can just cut and paste it in and out of that box, which I thought was a really cool shortcut. So hopefully you guys like this tutorial. I've got more responsive stuff coming soon. I'm going to try to be doing one tutorial per week. Uh, we'll call it Tutorial Tuesday. 
And uh, please subscribe if you haven't already. I've got more cool stuff coming soon. And go download all the fun free stuff on museresources.com because that's where I put everything that I make for you guys. All right, see you soon.